Welcome back to the Mondo Agora on the Voluntary Virtues Network. Today we're going to continue our talk on serial killers and the state's complete lack of ability to protect us from them. I have a whole list of uh, names to go through. But today we're going to continue to talk on John Wayne Gacy and possibly put the series on hold for a while and venture into other territories. And this is just to kind of keep my interest up. I'm getting a little tired of reading about serial killers and stuff. So, um, yeah, so we'll continue with this series later. And we may even continue with it next week. But I'm thinking maybe switch to something else. Anyway, enjoy. We're continue to talk on John Wayne Casey today. Thank you. Today we're going to continue our talk on a sleazy businessman, Democratic Party candidates, and killer clown John Wayne Gacy, and uh, we're going to really get to the, the murders today and how he really got away with it for so long, and he shouldn't have been able to. And I want to keep, I want everybody to keep in mind that during this time period he kept up the persona of being a family man, a businessman, and, you know, a politically motivated individual if you were in the political sphere. Anyway, during this time, towards the end of his murders, is when he had got um, an okay from the Secret Service to have his picture taken for the first lady. And he's wearing his little butt and saying that it was okay and everything. He passed her background checks and all that. So, how low under the radar he actually was. Keep in mind that Casey, before he ever started killing anyone, had been charged with sodomy and prosecuted successfully and accused of a number of other attempted rape um, and molestation cases dealing with young, younger males. So this is somebody who obviously should have been on some people's radar. He had this tendency and the people that have accused him of those acts have also accused him of threatening him claimed to have a lot of ties that would have silenced him. paid some guy, some other employee that he worked with to beat up somebody so they wouldn't testify against him. So this was a violent guy who actually knew about him, even though he had this persona over it. It was found out. So he goes to prison and he moves, changes cities, and poof, it's all gone. Casey took his first wife January 2nd, 1970. This one was kind of an accident. He picked this kid up, a 15-year-old kid named Timothy Jack McCoy from a Chicago Greyhound, and 
promised to show him the city. He showed him around the city, then took him back to his house. And the next morning, he was fixing Gacy's breakfast. He walks into Gacy's room to wake him up, and he's holding the kitchen knife. Gacy sees him with the kitchen knife and thinks he's trying to attack him, so he jumps on the kid and kills him. Um, he does this kind of out of self-defense. The big problem here is he really liked it. He enjoyed doing it. And that kind of thing became later, as you can see. Anyway, uh, it wasn't until two years later that he did it. He killed some other young kid. It was escalated. From there, it wasn't until a couple weeks later that he attacked another kid. This was uh, one that had his business. His business was expanding very quickly, and this kid got hurt at work, and he visited the kid. He gave the kid alcohol, and, and then he tricked the kid into putting on his handcuffs, as he did often. But his right cuff was loose, and he got out, and he actually got the handcuffs on on Gacy and put him like you know locked him down in the back behind him and him sit on the floor and you know Gacy was sitting there cussing at him and yelling at him and stuff like that and he promised to leave if he makes the cuffs off and he did and Gacy left. A couple of weeks after John attacks his that one employee on July 29th, 1975 he attacks another. This is um, 17 year old John Cuff. I can't say this awesome. Anyway, he uh, he's owed two weeks back salary, and he shows up at John's house. He's lured there and kills him, again, strangles him, buries him underneath his garage. And the police question him, and he says that the kid ran away, but he did go by there, and they settled their debt. Him and a few friends. They came by there, and then they all left. The dad didn't believe that. The uh, the parents of the kid, he called the police over a hundred times the next three years, urging them to investigate John Wayne Gacy, and they never did. He knew who killed his son, who had something to do with it. The police didn't listen. They didn't care. He got away with it, and he did it a whole lot more. And this was just his beginning. It was at this time, a couple of months after this last incident where he killed his employee, that him and his wife got a divorce. And if you remember what I said from the last episode, that's when the dog really got let off the chain. That's, that's when he went totally nuts. Gacy murdered seven boys over the year until an employee of his named David Cram moved into his house. And David Cram used to be in the army. And it took... Gacy attacked him and tried to rape him twice before the guy moved out. It was at this time that Gacy had a number of his employees dig trenches underneath his house. He told them that this was for irrigation. And, you know, these were ignorant young men. These were just, you know, 16, 15 year old kids. And said, hey, I need some irrigation things dug under my house. I'll pay you to do it. He checked on them constantly, make sure they dig in the right place, urged them to hurry up, getting irritated, agitated, you know, if they ventured into the wrong spots. And, uh, yeah, so he had all these trenches dug so he didn't have to dig these holes anymore to bury these bodies. And he had these kids do it. They were doing it for other kids. They had no idea. No clue at all. During this time, Gacy killed six more people few of which are actually PDM employees of his. That's how one, of the reason, one way he finds his victims. And in December, he kills a seventh. This is 17-year-old Gregory Godzik. This one's really, really fucked up. This is one of the kids that came over to his house and dug the quote-unquote drainage ditches under it. So essentially, this kid dug his own grave for Gacy. Gacy told everyone that Godsick ran away after he was questioned. 
and he even told everybody that he had a answer machine message left from Greg telling him that he was planning on running away but he had since erased this message a month later John kills another employee of his this is 19 year old John Sick he steals a couple of his possessions, a portable Motorola TV and a ring, and he keeps them in his bedroom, and then he sells the kid's car to Michael Rossi. Gacy takes three more lives, and then in March 1977, he is hired as a construction supervisor of PD Systems, and they specialize in the nationwide remodeling of drug stores. It's believed that in 1977 alone that nearly 80 buildings were successfully remodeled by PDM and PE systems. So he was a very busy guy. He got around and that you know led to a lot more victims. In August of that year, Michael Rossi was arrested for stealing gas and the car was traced back to John Gacy's house where he registered because Rossi lived there at the time. And he was asked about it. And his story changed a little bit. He said that that John sold him the car because he needed money to leave town. So he still needed to run away. He sold his car. And then he sold his car to, to this other cat. Before the end of the year, Gacy murdered six more young men, including two U.S. Marines and one police sergeant's son. On December 30th, 1977, Gacy abducted 19-year-old Robert Donald from Chicago bus stop at gunpoint. He takes his kid to his house. He rapes and tortures and holds his head under water multiple times until he passes out. And then, next day he drops into his work and releases him. And the kid reports him. He goes and he tells the cops and the cops on January 6th they go to, to Gacy and they ask him about it. And he says, oh yeah, um, you know, we had slave sex, really rough sex, but it was all consensual and the cops just dropped it. It's no big deal. I'm guessing it's because he's 19. But they should have been able to tell something else, and this is not the first complaint that's put on this guy. And a month later, in March, Casey he lures 26 year old Jeffrey Riggs to his house. Much the same way. Thor forms the man multiple times, rapes him, tortures him, and then leaves him unconscious in a park and he walks to his girlfriend's house. Rignal didn't remember much, but he did report it to the police. A few things did come through in this floor block that he still had to recall. That was Gacy's Black Oats Mobile and the Kennedy Expressway. So he staked out the Kennedy Expressway. He sit there waiting, looking for that car. That black car that drove. And he saw it. He followed it to Gacy's house and he called the cops and the cops arrested him. You know, when, when Gacy was arrested for the murders, the, uh, the trials were the uh, battery on Jeffrey Riggles. Riggles was holding him up. He was right there. So, you know, the cops had to wait until this kid did all the work for him pretty much. And he was the first person to catch him. He was raped and molested. He found him. Remember up to this point, Gacy has killed over 30 people without getting killed. And this is the whole time having people point fingers at him, saying, check this guy out. He's suspicious. You know, he was with my kid when he disappeared. The last person seen with these people it happened over and over and over again, yada yada yada, and nobody cared. You know, he was the last person seen with these people. Where he came up on multiple missing persons reports. 
where you know this, his second victim was the parents repeatedly called the police and said hey look into this guy look into Gacy to no avail how do you get away with it so long he was a businessman a community leader part of the local government there and he uh, you know he was a democratic party person he worked within the party and they liked him he was one of them. He was a good, upstanding citizen. Except for he murdered people, young boys, because he liked it. And the cops seemed to ignore it, just let it go on. On December, on December 11th, 1978, John Gacy visits a pharmacy to discuss a remodeling job. There he meets an employee of the pharmacy, it's a 15 year old kid named Robert Peace, and uh, this kid becomes John Gacy's last victim. There are interviews with cops saying that if you know, Robert was anyone else, they probably wouldn't have called Gacy. They only really looked into it because of who he was and who his parents were and everything. He was more of an quote unquote upstanding citizen, at least appeared that way more so to the police than the other disappeared youths, um, who Gacy always claimed were prostitutes, you know, male prostitutes. He, he claimed a lot of the times that he was defending himself. This kid was obviously none of that, and most of those, his were none of that, but the cops didn't catch any of them either, but this guy, for some reason the cops went after him after him. And, um, has everything to do with who he is. I'm not really sure why, but even the cops admit it in video. You can see it. After Gacy leaves the store, shortly after that, Robert tells his parents that he's going to leave the store for a little while to uh, talk to some contractor about the job, and he never returns. So this contractor was obviously Gacy because he was just in the score, store talking about a remodeling job with the owner. And um, so they follow a missing person's report with the police and they, they tell him to check out Gacy because this is the guy he wants to go see. And Gacy tells him that he never offered to get a job. He hasn't seen it. Blah, blah, blah. His normal you know, thing. And the cops tell him to come down to the station to a report, and he does so. He shows up at 3 o'clock in the morning, 3.30 in the morning, excuse me, covered in mud. He later said that he had a car accident. The cops don't really believe Gacy at this point. They looked into his background. They saw that he actually did time for sodomy. That he, uh, he, was, he, is, he stands charged of a battery case and has been accused numerous times of sexual misconduct with you. And they, they get him to do a, a detailed written statement of his whereabouts on December 11th. And they search his house. When they search his house, they find you know, all kinds of stuff related to the crime. A bunch of rings, a bunch of driver's license, TV. They also find a whole bunch of like things related to the violence and the rape aspect of this that he used. You know, two by four with holes drilled in it that he used as like a torture device and uh, things like that. This time that Michael Rossi, you know, the guy that John Gacy sold it, that kid's car to after he killed him, he called the police station and he says, hey, look into these two people who went messing around Gacy too. These were employees of PDM, you know, the company that he owned. At this point, the cops don't think they have enough evidence to arrest him, so they surveil him. They also interview Michael Rossi again says in 1977, Gacy got him to spread a whole bunch of lime under his house. That's interesting. They also searched his Oldsmobile. 
Casey's Ultimate Build. They used a, a cadaver sniffing dog who went and alerted to the fact that there was a dead body on the passenger seat in the car. I remember that Casey was very likable. He would hang out with his, his um, investigators. They, uh, they would come into his house and have drinks. He would cook for them. They had made, it, made him at restaurants. He would also start acting erratically sometime and just lose them in the streets. So they didn't know if he was gonna be friendly or he was just gonna to try to ditch them. They had no idea. And um, eventually this kind of act caught up with him. He invited a couple of his uh, followers, as you could say, his trailers into his house to have a fish dinner with him. And one of them smelled something from under the house it smelled rotten and it was caused by the decomposing body from the heater that he turned on because it was winter. Casey filed a civil lawsuit against the police saying that they were harassing him because of his political connections. The next night Casey went to his lawyer's office and he gave a detailed rambling statement of his confession. He to his lawyer of killing 30 plus people and then he slept on the lawyer's couch and left the next morning and started visiting people because he, he thought he was going to be arrested and um, during his visits he ended up giving a, a, a young attendant at a gas station a small bag of marijuana and the cops thinking that the case he's planning on offering him, offering himself they, uh, they pick him up and arrest him for distribution. And then they, they get all the evidence they have together, get the search warrant for his house, and they search his premises one more time before they find the body. It was when the cops told Gacy that they found the bodies in his house that he said that he was ready to clear the air. Quote unquote. Um, he also, he admitted to 30 plus murders and he said that all of them were runaways or male prostitutes and that was completely a lie. And he, you know, he told them how they, he did it, he you know, convinced a victim to come back to his house, he tricked them into putting handcuffs on did whatever they want to him, he wanted to to him, and then he did his rope trick where he put the, the rope around the victim's neck, put a rod through the two loops and twisted it until they were, you know, no more. And, you know, don't forget that many of the victims he, he lured back, he did so, he pretended to be a cop. He pretended to be a cop to a lot of these young men. Not all of them. He used various methods. That was one of his common methods. And, you know, the cops, they had people point fingers at this guy for years. He was busted several times for things, you know, terrible, terrible things that are approaching this. You know, the rape and battery of one man that they didn't even look into. It took the guy looking into himself, uh, going out, staking out the highway, finding the car, and following him back to his house. You know, he did the police work, not the police. And then you had those those kids that were assaulted before he moved to Chicago. He was in jail for that. And, like, that just completely disappeared from his past. Nobody cared. Nobody even knew. And he just went on with his life and went on to torturing and murder without anyone suspecting of it. Except for a few of the parents who called the police and repeatedly said, hey, check this guy out. He was seen with my kid when he disappeared. But you know. They are here for our protection. If it wasn't for them. Who would protect us from crazy loon nuts? Crazy psycho killers. John Crazy Clown, Casey, or Ted Bundy, 
Charles Manson or any of these crazy freaks. The state's supposed to protect us from them? Yeah, right. They don't. And I think this is a good case of proof that they don't. I mean, they, they were kind of the reason he was out there for so long. All the evidence that, that traced back to him and nobody said, hey, we should probably check this guy out. You know, anyone who was arrested for you know, sexual, sexually molesting a kid should be watched at least. Not, you know, put up on a pedestal as some, you know, I feel like businessman and model community leader. He raped, tortured children. He murdered them and buried them under his house, threw a few of them off a bridge. He's an awful, awful human being. The music used for this episode was from Revolutionary Void. They were also used for the first episode. The album used for this particular podcast though it was Thread Soul and it contains track one Ventus Solaris track two Biomythus track three Mind Mapping track four As We May track five City Lights at Night track seven Infography and track nine The Robot is Dreaming and uh, as you can tell, it's kind of a jazzy, uh, e electronic music type of, kind of thing. And it's really cool. I really like it. Check it out. Go listen to more of the music. Got a whole bunch.